What is the greatest frick it, I'll do it myself in history? Juan Pujol Garcia was a Spaniard who created his own counterintelligence operation for the Allies during World War II. Initially, he approached British and American intelligence to offer them his services, but both countries rebuffed him. Undeterred, Garcia created a fictional persona as a pro-fascist Spaniard official and got himself recruited by the Nazis, who directed him to travel to Britain to recruit agents. Instead, Garcia created a network of fictitious agents and sub-agents using publicly available information like newspapers and travel brochures. It was at this point that he again contacted Allied intelligence and he was finally recruited. Garcia continued his work throughout the war and for the same operation he received both a knighthood from the British and the Iron Cross from Nazi Germany. The Nazis never realized that he was a double agent. In 1947, a guy named Thor Heyerdahl was trying to prove his theory that the Polynesian islands were settled by people from South America, not Asia. Nobody believed him because it was thought that crossing such a large ocean with the technology they had back then was impossible. So he decided to build a boat using only the tools and materials available at the time these migrations took place. And then he sailed that boat across the Pacific Ocean, nearly dying in the process, but ultimately making it to the Polynesian Islands. Maurice Hilleman invented over 40 vaccines during his career in the pharmaceutical industry. In 1963, his oldest daughter caught the mumps. He cultured a sample from her, developed a vaccine, and injected it into his younger daughter. That vaccine is still in use and has saved millions of lives. In total, it's estimated that his work has saved 118 million lives globally. Oh my god, talk about a true champ. A guy's daughter gets sick and he just goes, never again. Nikola Tesla was tasked with lighting up the World's Fair, but Thomas Edison wouldn't allow him to use any of his patents. So Tesla had to invent a new light bulb that didn't use any of Edison's patents and could still have thousands made in time for the event. Jon Snow, not that one, the father of epidemiology. No one believed him that the cholera outbreak in what is now Soho was because of a contaminated water pump. He broke it. They arrested him for vandalism and held him until the outbreak suddenly ended. Otis invented pretty much what we consider the modern elevator. Nobody was convinced it was safe, so he hoisted himself up extremely high and had somebody cut the cable with an axe to prove how confident he was that the elevator was safe regardless of almost worst-case scenarios. Perhaps when nobody believed Barry Marshall that H. pylori can cause stomach ulcers, so he thought, screw it, I'll test it on myself, and ended up getting the Nobel Prize. Edit. Wow, I did not expect this to get so many upvotes. Also, thank you folks for the Bow Awards. However, I feel it's necessary to point out that Robin Warren, the co-winner of the Nobel Prize, has actually done most of the work for the discovery. But Marshall got all the attention, well, because of doing this. Thank you, Ramiel One, for reminding us. The doctor stationed in Antarctica that removed his own appendix. God damn. I remember hearing about that guy, and I cannot begin to imagine what that was like, cutting yourself open, seeing your appendix, and being like, I hope this isn't how they find my body. Cliff Stoll, the cuckoo's egg, noticed weird traffic on his university servers. No one believed him that there was any risk occurring. Ended up uncovering a major hacking attempt to steal missile designs and basically created internet security. I think it was missile designs. It's been a long time. In 1888, Almond Brown Stroger, an undertaker, noticed he was losing a lot of business to the other undertaker in town. He found out that the other undertaker's wife was a telephone operator, and when she intercepted people asking to be connected to Stroger's funeral home, the operator would route the call to her husband's funeral home instead. Three years later, Stroger patented the automatic teller exchange, a system which allowed telephone users to make calls without the need for human operators single-handedly destroying an entire workforce. Hey, he didn't destroy an entire workforce. His competitor's wife dug their grave when they messed with them. <laughs> that might be my favorite story thus far. Gonna be a hard one to beat. James Clerk Maxwell was idolized by Einstein as being the father of modern physics. Not only did he formulate the classical theory of electromagnetic radiation, but just for craps and giggles, he calculated exactly what Saturn's rings were made from using pure mathematics. It wasn't until Voyager 1 and 2 passed by and took photos in the early 80s did we get confirmation that Maxwell was right. 
He then calculated how to take a color photograph in 1855. This was achieved in 1861 and is recognized as the first ever color photograph. Probably the time Nando Parado and Roberto Canessa decided they couldn't wait around any longer and legged it for 10 days across the Andes with no warm clothes, climbing gear, or food, except some scraps of their dead friends stuffed into a sock. They finally found someone out in the middle of nowhere, Sergio Catalan, who rode horseback all night and then took a bus to get some help. The mountain climbers had come from the wreckage of a crashed plane that everyone had been looking for for over two months. They needed help for the other survivors who were injured and starving. They saved 14 of their friends. Jonas Salk needed human subjects to test his polio vaccine. That's normally a long process, and he wanted to make the vaccine available as quick as possible, so he just experimented on himself. Henry VIII couldn't get his way with the Pope, so he made the Church of England so he could do what he wanted. A man who was a tractor mechanic company owner made a good chunk of money and bought a Ferrari. He felt that the car wasn't as good as it could be, and it wasn't very comfortable, so he brought his complaints all the way to Enzo Ferrari, the owner of the company. Enzo insulted the man, saying a mere tractor mechanic didn't know how to make a sports car. That sparked a rivalry that lasts to this day. That man was Ferruccio Lamborghini. When Julius Caesar decided to just up and fricking march into Rome to declare himself the military leader. As I recall, that ended up working out pretty well for him. Job was a real pain in the back, though. Not a very old story. Manji, or the mountain man, lived in a very remote village of India whose route to nearby was blocked by a mountain, and hence villagers had to climb it every time and they had to do that daily to get essential supplies. During one of these trips, his wife fell down the mountain. He loved her a lot. He tried first to persuade the government to do a mountain tunnel project there, but to vain. So he went on alone to break the entire mountain with just an axe. He did that for 10 plus years and finally succeeded. There's a Bollywood movie on him too, titled Manji the Mountain Man. Donald Knuth is one of the big names in computer science. Back in the 1960s, he set out to write the definitive texts on computer programming and analysis of algorithms. The first three volumes came out, and he started the fourth in the early to mid-1970s. He was unhappy with how the newer printing slash editions were typeset, and so he took a summer to solve that problem. A decade later, the fourth volume had still not been completed. But, as a consolation prize, we got Tex, later extended to the more commonly used LaTeX, without question the most comprehensive and powerful language for creating documents with heavy technical requirements. It is a strange mix of a markup language like HTML and a compiled language like C. It is completely free and has been for well over 30 years and is probably the most bug-free piece of software I've ever seen. Certainly for its size and scope, there's not much out there of comparable quality. There's literally no mathematics that cannot be properly typeset in text slash latex. Its default style is instantly recognizable to any working mathematician. It is used across nearly all STEM fields, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of journals that only accept manuscripts written in latex. It wasn't until the early 2000s that drafts of the fourth volume started to appear. Nobody has seemed to mind. When Nintendo turned down a collab with Sony, then Sony said, Frick it, we'll do it ourselves. The rest is history. Honestly, I'm glad that happened. The companies do such different things in gaming these days, and frankly, I feel like gaming is better for each of their individual contributions. During the American Revolution, John Paul Jones sailed over to England to burn down British naval ships. He succeeded, of course, and made back safely. After the Revolution, he was even pardoned by the town that he burned most of the ships in. I'm surprised no one's mentioned Catherine the Great of Russia. She decided her husband was useless, which granted he was, and proceeded to set up a military coup to overthrow him. Even with the plan being discovered early, she dressed herself in military garb and marched with her new army, which had just sworn loyalty to her, down to Peter's palace, where he was forced to resign the throne all without a single drop of blood shed. At least until Peter turned up dead sometime later under shady circumstances, but honestly, for a military coup, it was pretty nonviolent. If saying, frick it, I'm ruling Russia myself isn't great, I don't know what is. I mean, it's right there next to her name for a reason. Desmond Doss, single-handedly saved from 50 to 100 men up on Hacksaw Ridge in Okinawa. 
His company was ordered to retreat when they were attacked by the Japanese, but instead he said, nah, stayed up on the ridge alone, unarmed, and dragged as many soldiers as he could to safety without any help. Even when he was shot by a sniper and riddled with shrapnel, he made sure they took another guy down the hillside before him. Edit. I'm aware there's a movie. I've just read about him before, and I know he's done more than just what is in the movie. I just didn't want to make a 3,000-word post about the many ways this guy is amazing. Why not? Hell, I would gladly just read that as its own video. The guy who started FedEx wrote a college paper about a nationwide overnight shipping company and got a C. Started the company anyways. Later, after he started it and it was struggling, he couldn't get a loan and the company was almost bankrupt, and he bet next week's payroll at the casino on roulette and won. He got a silver star in the Vietnam War and now co-owns the Washington Redskins, the latter often viewed as the biggest failure in his life. George Clooney bought his own spy satellite to prove the alleged crimes of an African warlord because nobody else would. Leo Major, he liberated an entire village from Nazis by himself. He's one of the handful of super bad-butt soldiers you sometimes hear about from World War II. Leroy Jenkins! Canadian soldier Leo Major and his friend Willie Arsenault were scouting a Dutch town called Zwolle that had been captured by Germans in World War II. On this scouting trip, the two had decided to liberate Zwolle together, but were spotted and Arsenault was killed. Major, enraged, killed two Germans while the rest fled. On the outskirts of the town, Major intercepted a vehicle disarming the soldiers there. He told a French-speaking soldier that all the Canadian artillery would be firing on the town in the morning, and decidedly let the Nazi free to spread the rumor, even returning his weapon as a total alpha move. That night, Major decided to single-handedly liberate the town. Arming himself with many weapons, he made explosions and noise, making it sound like the entire Canadian army was there. Several times that night, Major went back and forth from Zwolle to the Canadian base, taking 8 to 10 German prisoners each time. At one point, Major located the Gestapo, high-ranking Nazis, headquarters and raided it himself. He killed several SS officers and the rest fled. By morning, Major discovered that the Germans who had taken Zwolle had entirely retreated. I should also mention that Major was a sniper who had only one eye from a phosphorus grenade explosion years prior and remained in the military because he insisted he only needed one eye to aim his weapon, and that to him he looked like a pirate. The Dutch town of Zwolle was liberated by a one-eyed sniper. He has several other legendary acts, but this to me was his best. I need more stories about this guy. I'm either finding a book on him or another thread about him. Either way, I'm here for it. The dude in the war with wounded fingers. A doctor wouldn't amputate them, so he bit them off himself. Closest I can think of is Erwin Rommel during the Blitzkrieg seeing an opportunity to make an exploit and instead of waiting said frick it and charged 200 miles into French territory. Clara Lemlich taking the stage at a union meeting in 1909 to declare a general strike after the older male union leaders told the working girls that there really wasn't a point in striking and it would be too hard. Just be patient and deal with it. So 20-year-old Clara interrupts them, climbs up on the stage, and shouts at the crowd that she's tired of just talk, time to strike. And everyone went for it. Instant agreement of the workers. Wow, this got some attention, so editing to add that I dug up my old research. A translation of what she said originally in Yiddish was, I have listened to all the speeches and I have no further patience for talk. I too have worked and suffered and I am tired of talk. I move that we go on general strike. Now. Seward's decision to buy Alaska from Russia. Metallica fired Dave Mustaine 1983 because he was sort of a control freak and wanted to take the band in a more prog jazz metal direction. He was also abusing drugs and was known for violent behavior at the time. He went off and created his own band, Megadeth, and over the next 30 plus years he sold millions of albums and toured the whole world writing and controlling pretty much everything he's ever wanted. It seems they've all now patched things up. Dude is an absolute genius beast of a guitarist slash songwriter. Also, when guitarist Hillel Slovak died, 1988, John Frusciante was a 19-year-old kid and a huge fan of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. He was heartbroken and didn't want to see the end of his favorite band. So, he went and auditioned to play lead guitar. He got the gig, helped take them to the top of the charts. The rest is history. Today, he's considered one of the greatest rock guitarists out there. 
Ugh, I just know I screwed up that name, but I refuse to take the time to learn how to pronounce it. My time isn't free, and I refuse to give it away, give it away, give it away now. Alexander the Great solving the Jordian knot by cutting it with his sword. We had a client that had his books and processes so messed up we were doing almost a thousand journal entries a month to make corrections. He had five full-time people in accounting when he could have gotten away with one accountant and one cheap part-time billing person. He got tired of our bills and hearing us make recommendations, so he finally said, I'll do it myself. All five of his people quit over the next few months, and last I heard, they weren't even able to bill customers. Hannibal of Carthage deciding to take his army over the Alps includes war elephants. Wasn't there that Russian, of course he was Russian, doctor that did stomach surgery on himself with only a bottle of alcohol for anesthetic? Let's not forget that Isaac Newton ran out of math to work with and was like, I guess I'll just invent calculus then. The story of calculus. When Pedro Serrano realized Jobu wasn't going to help him hit a damn curveball. Lamborghini building cars because Frick Ferrari. We're getting a few duplicate stories that feel a lot like the TLDR versions of previous ones. I'm only including them because I'm too lazy not to. The Soviet woman who lost her husband to the Nazis sold everything and to pay for a tank with the request that she gets to drive it to fight Nazis. Go read up about Maria Oktyabrskaya on Wikipedia. When Princess Vespa's hair got singed. Yeah, I'll admit that one was not bad. Not bad for a girl. Hey, that was pretty good for Rambo! Stanislav Petrov making the decision not to push the button to launch nuclear missiles as would have been his direct orders when the Russian early warning system wrongly indicated the launch of American missiles in 1983. Our man saved the entire world from nuclear destruction, so this is undeniably the greatest of these moments in all human history. There should be a statue of him in every major city around the world. Here's a notable mention, albeit somewhat obscure. Sam Regenstrife once made 40% of the dishwashers in the USA at the time. He fell ill with a kidney stone and went to his local hospital in Indiana. Upon leaving, he was disgusted by the waiting times and quality of care. He took matters into his own hands and created a hospital and founded the Regenstrife Institute. This institute helped map the genome of COVID-19 and translated its findings into 20-plus languages helping the world fight this virus. During the American Civil War, General McClellan was in charge of the Army of the Potomac. He was an overcautious kind of officer, and he wasn't doing enough to move against Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. Lincoln got fed up with the inaction and wrote him a letter in which he asked his general if he could borrow the army since you're not using it for anything. Dave Grohl, the drummer for Nirvana, became unemployed after the lead singer killed himself while on copious amounts of drugs. Shortly thereafter, he created a new band for which there were no members yet other than himself. He written the music, lyrics, as well as played vocals, backup vocals, drums, bass, and guitar by himself. Foo Fighters' name was an afterthought, so people wouldn't recognize him right away as a member of Nirvana. The self-titled album Foo Fighters is also the second highest selling album by the 25-year career of the band. I'm not really a huge Foo Fighters fan, but I've got to respect the hustle. Grohl knows how to get stuff done. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. The first thing that comes to thought here is the Louisiana Purchase. Congress planned on buying a small piece of the available land, but Jefferson used some interpretation frickery to double the size of the U.S. without congressional approval. Dashroth Manji, the mountain man. Dude carved a way through a mountain single-handedly to pave a shorter way to a hospital because his wife died due to the lack of treatment after falling from the same mountain. It took him 22 years. The authorities did not react, so he did. This happened in rural India, and there's a movie about him. The guy who made body armor shot himself to test it. When Sony and Nintendo partnered for a CD add-on for the SNES, but Nintendo decided to partner with Philips instead, leaving Sony behind. Sony took all the knowledge about video games that they had learned from working with Nintendo and created the PlayStation. Tommy Wiseau couldn't land an acting job in Hollywood, so he wrote, produced, directed, and starred in his own movie despite having no experience in any of those things. The rest is history. How could Hollywood do that to Tommy? They're tearing him apart! Netflix. Blockbuster really mad that guy off.
Well, if you mean greatest, as in most bad butt, probably when Andrew Jackson beat the hell out of his own would-be assassin and had to be pulled off by his own bodyguards. If you mean most well-known, probably in the Bible, when little David messed up Goliath and then started a kingdom. Leonid Rogozov removing his own appendix, or Inez Ramirez Perez doing her own C-section. Rogozov was a doctor, Perez a poor Mexican woman. Oh my lord, yeah, gonna have to give the award to Perez, that's wow. Sir Ranulf finds, after an expedition, I think to the Arctic, had frostbitten digits on one hand. After becoming irritated and uncomfortable waiting for the docs to sort out treatment, he went to his garden shed and amputated them himself. Linus Torvalds was thrashing SBN. They said, well, can you do better? Now everyone uses Git. Edit. You mean his name isn't Linux Torvalds? I wouldn't say it's the greatest in history, but Megan Trainer pitched all about that bass to countless songwriters who decided not to record it, notably Adele and Beyonce. She decided to release it herself, shooting to number one and launching her artist career. Thomas Jefferson thought the U.S. should expand and Napoleon needed cash. Jefferson was an advocate for very limited federal government, though, and wanted to find some way other than the federal government buying it. Finally, with no other choice, he said frick it and bought it, losing all credibility among his followers with regard to having a small federal government. That could be completely incorrect, something somebody made up and I believed. Okay, this is the second time this has come up, and it's not completely accurate. Jefferson was involved, but so were Monroe and, pff, ah, crap, someone else. But there is more to history than what these stories are saying, folks, so go, go read a book. Killing Hitler? For the last track of their album Innuendo, Queen was arguing about if Freddie Mercury was healthy enough to sing. May states, I said, Fred, I don't know if this is going to be possible to sing, and he went, I'll frickin' do it, darling. He put his alcohol down and recorded the entire song in one take. That guy who got his arm jammed while rock climbing, so he amputated it with a toothpick and some pocket lint. Marie Curie, Polish slash French chemist and physicist who, without going into great detail, died of constant exposure to radiation while seeking a cure for others, more or less sacrificed herself as a human guinea pig knowing full well the consequences of her actions. Here in Scotland, we have many Marie Curie charity shops who provide funds for hospices and the like. I'm pretty sure she's responsible for saving my butt and many countless others for her pioneering works was quoted in July 1912 as saying, Frick it, I'll do it myself. Allegedly. John Paul Jones literally just went to the UK and captured a bunch of ships during the Revolutionary War. Keep in mind, he just had a small fleet of merchant ships. Prince single-handedly wrote, produced, and played all the instruments and his own vocals of Purple Rain. He did it by playing each instrument all the way through while recording each layer of instrumentals over each other, then editing all of them in one track with his vocals as the final touch. Always gonna win me over with some Prince trivia. When you're in Minnesota, you either love Prince or you watch your friggin' back. Henry Ford proposed to buy Ferrari so that Ford can be competitive in the performance car market. The deal was about to be signed, but Enzo only wanted to sell the commercial Ferrari division and not the racing arm. So Henry Ford said frick it, and thus was born the Ford GT40. Samuel Morse invented the telegraph after his wife died. Due to slow communications, he was unable to make it back to her before she was buried. This was likely the motivation for him to create a faster way to deliver messages. P.S. Please shut up about Hitler. Dr. Donald Unger, who for 60 years cracked the knuckles on only one hand to test whether it contributed to arthritis. It didn't. He won the Nobel Prize. George Washington used to win bar bets by crushing a walnut in his bare hands. His friends would also set up the bets. <laughs> I don't know how this is a frick it, I'll do it myself story, but I still liked it. Clarence B. Kraft, Medal of Honor winner in World War II. His citation reads, He was a rifleman when his platoon spearheaded an attack on Hen Hill, the tactical position on which the entire Nahashuri Yonoburu line of Japanese defense in Okinawa Ryukyu Island was hinged. For 12 days, our forces had been stalled, and repeated heavy assaults by one battalion and then another had been thrown back by the enemy with serious casualties. With five comrades, Private First Class Craft was dispatched in advance of Company G to feel out the enemy resistance. The group had proceeded only a short distance up the slope when rifle and machine gun fire, coupled with a terrific barrage of grenades, wounded three and pinned down the others. 
Against odds that appeared suicidal, Private First Class Kraft launched a remarkable one-man attack. He stood up in full view of the enemy and began shooting with deadly marksmanship wherever he saw a hostile movement. He steadily advanced up the hill, killing Japanese soldiers with rapid fire, driving others to cover in their strongly disposed trenches, unhesitatingly facing alone the strength that had previously beaten back attacks and battalion strength. He reached the crest of the hill where he stood silhouetted against the sky while quickly throwing grenades at extremely short range into the enemy positions. His extraordinary assault lifted the pressure from his company for the moment, allowing members of his platoon to comply with his motions to advance and pass him more grenades. With the chain of his comrades supplying him while he stood atop the hill, he furiously hurled a total of two cases of grenades into a main trench and other positions on the reverse slope of Hen Hill, meanwhile directing the aim of his fellow soldiers who threw grenades from the slope below him. He left his position, where grenades from both sides were passing over his head and bursting on either slope to attack the main enemy trench as confusion and panic seized the defenders. Straddling the excavation, he pumped rifle fire into the Japanese at point-blank range, killing many and causing the others to flee down the trench. Pursuing them, he came upon a heavy machine gun which was still creating havoc in the American ranks. With rifle fire and a grenade, he whipped out this position. By this time, the Japanese were in complete rout and American forces were swarming over the hill. Private First Class Craft continued down the central trench of the mouth of a cave where many of the enemy had taken cover. A satchel charge was brought to him and he tossed it into the cave. It failed to explode. With great daring, the intrepid fighter retrieved the charge from the cave, relighted the fuse, and threw it back, sealing up the Japs in a tomb. In the local action against tremendously superior forces heavily armed with rifles, machine guns, mortars, and grenades, Private First Class Kraft killed at least 25 of the enemy, but his contribution to the campaign on Okinawa was of much more far-reaching consequences for Hen Hill was the key to the entire defense line, which rapidly crumbled after his utterly fearless and heroic attack. A lot of war stories in this particular thread. Though frankly, war would give some pretty good excuses to just do something yourself, I would imagine. When nobody could kill Hitler. Almost every team project. Thanos. Thanos' plan was friggin' stupid as hell. Honest to God, his reasoning in the comics was better, and that was all about having the hots for death. When Julius Caesar got kidnapped and was offended by his ransom, he demanded they make it higher. Friggin' love your salads, bro. Alfred Wegener, when no one believed him that the continents were once together, Pangea, so he did his own research and died in a blizzard in Greenland. And only 30 years after he died, a new idea came to life, plate tectonics and continental drift. Lynn manuel Miranda kept getting denied roles, so he decided to write his musical and made sure that he'd get the lead. He was Uznavi in In the Heights and Alexander Hamilton in Hamilton. When the Catholic Church would not give Henry VIII a divorce. Everyone has hit on the popular ones, the less popular ones, and the ones you will only find after your third hour of a very focused Wikipedia spelunking. I will share one you can't find anywhere because he is not a notable figure in a grander history. He is just my uncle, the roughest son of a bee I have ever known. His moments of stubbornness, harsh individualism, and even creativity are talked about in the family as fun anecdotes. But growing up, they were a mythology to me. When we moved to a new state, my uncle let me and my mom stay with him for some time. He had a number of strange things going on. His dog, that connected the name of the feeling of flooring surfaces and could be told exactly where to stand. The anthill wars and the driveway that sometimes left a horrific spackling of black limbs and bodies for the morning. The unusual found art of a homesteader personality, trinkets, found pictures, and bits of glass. At this point in time, my uncle had two major burdens, alcoholism and a mouthful of rotting teeth. He would drink himself to ease the pain, and it would transform him into the biggest butthole I ever knew. He wasn't abusive, he just wouldn't shut the frick up. Eventually, self-medication with the booze wasn't effective anymore, and he saw a dentist. It's got to be bad if he's seeing a professional. He wanted all of his teeth pulled and dentures in their place. The dentist said my uncle still had a few healthy teeth, that dentures wouldn't be the best option for him. They offered to pull those beyond hope, but that would be all. He was too stubborn for that answer. His teeth, rotten, failing, or functional, had all betrayed him as far as he was concerned, and he was not going to be a man with half a set of teeth, if that. 
That night after I'd gone to sleep, my uncle sat at the kitchen table armed with a bottle of whiskey and his Leatherman pliers. He drank himself numb and proceeded to pry the teeth out of his own mouth. My mom was ready with the rags, iodine, and cotton balls. She expected screams, maybe an ambulance. No, she said my uncle made quick work of it, cried in relief, and slept soundly with a mouthful of paper towels. I saw the aftermath of a stained kitchen table, but that was all. He got his dentures. And I don't think it's any coincidence that he chose sobriety shortly after. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.